It's Mac. Welcome back. Episode 23 of Icebreaker. AJ, how are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, there's a cat in the room, so if at any point he pops into the screen, don't be surprised. Uh, that's just something that might happen today. I'd love to see the cat pop into the screen. Uh, before we get going here, episode 23 is presented by Boston Pizza Winnipeg. A bunch of locations around town, and uh, check them out. They're on the Skip the Dishes. They deliver still open so uh you know important to support uh businesses around winnipeg and let me tell you, is a good lunch spot great lunch spot and yeah. that bandera bread yeah holy yeah so good so good well your Bengals finished up today they had uh, a pretty it was a great game the Bengals browns game week seven might have been so far one of the best games of the whole year that was so fun to watch but uh man Give it to Baker Mayfield. We've been saying for a couple of weeks, I think the Browns might be real this year. That's weird. Finally, right? That's weird. You know what? I, can't, I was watching the NFL today. As we record this on Sunday. Um, the amount of kicks that are still being missed. You're talking like extra kicks or like extra, extra point points, kicks? Or? field goals, like everything. <laughs> Ever since they moved them back. The kickers just don't seem to – it's never an automatic anymore. That's for and it's, sure. it always comes back to haunt the team. <laughs> it's Not the Browns, though. Browns missed an extra point today. They did just fine. But I, I, I definitely see what you're saying. It's like – it's mind-boggling that how many are being missed in these – like, obviously, kicking is a tough job, but, like, that is your only job. <laughs> it, yeah. You know? <laughs> I like that. Hey, before we move on from the NFL, I just want to say, I know everybody makes fun of them. They're America's team. Uh, Condolences to the Cowboys because now Andy Dalton, uh, he took a nasty shot. Did you see that? Nasty, dirty shot. Oh, my God. (laughs) And so that team, they were talking about going to the Super Bowl this year. The players on Washington, even the Washington players saw it and they had their hands on their head. They're like, oh, no. And then – the player, when he was he got ejected, he he was given a, like the the why. No, and if you missed the hit, it was just a head to head hit. He lowered his helmet right on Andy Dalton as he was sliding. So he was a defenseless player, and uh, I think this when they put their hands on the helmet was what are you doing? Yeah, because I think everybody on the field knew that was gonna he's he's got to get a suspension for that. We'll probably know by the time this is out. Well, you know what was a carbon copy of. I think it was like five years ago when Joe Flacco slid down and someone did that to him and he was like out of it. Do you remember that? Yeah. Flacco and there's another quarterback who is really, it's, I, for all I know, it was Andy Dalton again with the Bengals. Um, you got to just think that the players know at this point, if you're sliding, just, just, just catch them, just tap them. <laughs> I know like it's, it's a fast speed. It's a fast speed game. I could never play football. But that's just ugly to watch. So uh, good luck to the Cowboys down the road. Yeah, it was. The Cowboys are, you know, they're definitely in some trouble now. Hey, you know what? If you're a third stringer on a Cowboys team with Dak Prescott and Andy Dalton and you don't think you're ever going to get a chance to play, now's your time to uh, now's your time to earn your paycheck. Talk about the World Series game four last night. And if you didn't see it, so it's bottom of the ninth. Tampa's got two on, two out. And... Uh, the guy goes up to the plate to bat and he looks at his bat and he goes one time. He like mouths one time and then he, he hits a base knock. So first of all, the Dodgers center fielder like fumbles it. So the two guys are rounding the bases guy comes in to tie the game at seven, seven. Okay. So then he throws it home, but as he throws it home, a Rosa Reina for Tampa Bay's rounding third, he trips he does a somersault on the base pass. So the ball gets to home plate. The catcher goes, and as he's turning it to bring it to home plate, he throws it away. So a Rose Arena gets up from falling, dives for home, wins the game. It was insane. So now the World Series is tied 2-2. Like either of those drops, the one from the center field or the one at home plate, and it's over. It's over. It's game over. <laughs> That's that's why we watch sports, man. That's the magic moments of sports where it's just it shouldn't ever be able to happen, and it all came together. And we laugh about it, but it's the World Series. That thing's going to Game 7. In Major League Baseball, the World <laughs> Series, and this is happening. Yeah. It was, it was an insane kind of turn of events and how that went down. And I don't know if you've seen it, but 
go to ESPN on Twitter and there's so many angles of it. It's just a wild sequence of events, but. Well, and you have to watch all the angles because there's so much going on on all different parts of the field. <laughs> and like, there's a, uh, there's a video where like they get the other players reactions and no one can believe what's happening. <laughs> and the guy's just laying at home plate with his hands on it just looking up going like he can't believe it he's just tapping the plate. i can't believe i made it home <laughs> yeah it's crazy it's good because you know what the baseball season uh with the excitement of it coming back amidst the COVID 19 scare and just the way that they've handled themselves especially early when we thought are they even going to play out the season because of COVID 19 right. when right. the marlins were testing positive this is good to see uh uh very exciting finish to the World Series. And there was fans in the stadium. Yeah. And it, in the replays and on the videos, you can actually hear them going crazy for like the first time in forever, <laughs> which was awesome. It's good. Yeah. Uh, did you watch the UFC? Only the highlights. Um, big news about Khabib. Did everybody know he was going to retire after this fight or was it a rumor? I don't think. Well, so when his dad passed away from COVID-19, yeah. Right. His dad was always in his corner. Um, I don't think it was really, I don't think people were talking about it. I don't think anybody saw it coming. And then he won. So he, now he's 29 and 0. And yeah. honestly, like, apparently he fought on a, a broken ankle or something. Yeah. Three weeks ago, he broke his ankle. He said he didn't tell anybody about it. And he won. And I was looking, I was scrolling Twitter while the fight was happening, saying he's 28 and 0, and he's, he looks better than he's ever looked. And he had a, Broken ankle. Yeah. So I don't know if you ever cement that guy as the best of uh, all time. I think you might have to, but what he said is he can't, his dad was always in his corner and he can't, he can't go back without his dad being there. And apparently so he said he talked to his mom when this fight came up and they thought it would be the right thing to do. And cause his dad was part of his camp, right. Leading up into the next fight. And so he did it. But yeah, you retired 29 and 0. Let's just like take a moment here. 29 and 0 in the UFC. There are few people in any sport who dominate that intensely. Like Floyd Mayweather in boxing is what Khabib is now in the UFC. Yeah, but I just think like boxing, obviously tough sport, right? But you do have the gloves are more padded. Right. And there's no other elements that you have to protect against other than the fists. Right. The yeah. UFC, like it's all like all rules are off. Right. You, you just remember when Khabib fought McGregor. It was great. And everybody before the fight said, well, this guy is, doesn't stand a chance. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's fighting Conor McGregor and it was yeah. the big myth of Conor McGregor and he knocked him silly. Yeah. <laughs> so that in itself cemented him as one of the best. Um, it's a shame. I wonder how far his career could have gone. Yeah, no, I agree. And I just think like when you really think about it, to go undefeated in a sport like the UFC and the more I watch it, you can yeah. see how like, you know, you get caught once, you get knocked out, right? For that to never happen, yeah. it's really <laughs> remarkable. So, you know what? Hats off to Khabib for an insane run Big, in a hell of a career. giant fluffy hats off. Yes. Khabib. Yeah, and you know what I do respect about him? He always just went about his business. Yeah. He was never that guy, like, trash talking. Like, obviously, that was McGregor's thing, right? That was what he did. But like, Still is. Yeah. Still not fighting. That's just what he does. But Khabib <laughs> was always just, like, just went about his business. Quiet and, and won, which was cool to see. So Yeah, um, and to go, out, to go out on your own terms, I think it should be any, or any athlete's dream. Absolutely. To not have to duck out, to not have to go out on a bad note, to just win, quit, go out. You have a family, you have a mother, made a promise. Good luck, Khabib. Yeah, absolutely. We were talking before the show. We've been talking about this one for a while, about our favorite Halloween candy, but we had to save it. It's true. Until the week leading into Halloween. And there's just so many good candies out there. But we're going to pick our favorite three things that we – used to receive on Halloween back when we could trick or treat. Not saying yeah. that you can't go trick or treating this year. Just be safe while doing it. And before we get to the draft, I just want to say if you're handing out candy for trick or treaters this year, go with the full size bars. Absolutely. You're going to make a kid's Halloween. Go full and you'll size. be the talk of the neighborhood. If you want to be the talk of the neighborhood, the full size bars are the way to do it. 
Uh, number one pick this week goes to, I've got to get this one off the board. The Reese's peanut butter cup was the best thing that you could get. Wow. That's a good one. I, a it's, I think it's, I think it's globally known as the number one Halloween candy. And that's before you put it in the freezer. And yes. if you're not putting your Reese's peanut butter cups in the freezer before you eat them, start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to go off your full size thing because this was, I had written down the full size Kit Kat. You just can't beat it. You can't beat dumping out your pillow sack of candy and seeing one of those in there. And they stand out too because you got all the little fun size and then there's just one. Yeah. There's a golden beacon that's shining down on it somehow. Uh, my number two pick goes to the Snickers Bar Mac. Really? Snickers seems to have like the most substance of any of the candies that you're going to get for Halloween. Really? The Snickers Bar? Yeah. Nougat and nuts and caramel. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay, I would never. When you're hungry, eat a Snickers. <laughs> you're not okay. you. You're not you, and you're hungry. <laughs> that's, one, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, my second pick, I've been debating between, between three candies, but I'm gonna go with the Sour Patch Kids. Man, you know, I didn't even take my train of thought into like the gummy candy territory, so that's a good pick. That's where I go. Like, I just love the sugar. I love sugar. So <laughs> the Sour Patch Kid is the sugar. And when, so when you were a kid and you were trick-or-treating, you would finish the bag and then you'd tip it back and finish the sugar, wouldn't you? What do you mean when I was a kid? I still do that. <laughs> it's like, remember those fun dips? It's like you just put a little little bit of saliva on the end of your finger and get the rest of the sugar. What the heck was the point of those? Here's a bag of sugar, guys. Here You can eat it off of a candy stick. <laughs> Made of sugar. <laughs> My third and final pick is coming out of nowhere, Mac. You could never have picked this. You would have never seen it coming because I don't think anybody agrees with me. Number three favorite Halloween candy to get in the bag was the Tootsie Roll. Wow. Okay. Chewy, you are. You Not are, the pops. I don't want those pops, but the Tootsie Rolls. And then they came in different flavors. You got like oh, the blue and the orange one. This is so crazy you're bringing this up. <laughs> this was my pick. This was my third pick. No. Yes. <laughs> the blue and the orange ones. Well, I can give you the blue and the orange as your third pick. We'll nope. have to negotiate this. We'll get the lawyers involved some other time. I'm going to get the original Tootsie Roll. That's fine. I'm happy we brought it up because it needed to, it needed to have a little bit of airtime. My third pick is right along the same lines, the Tootsie Pop. I love the Tootsie Pops. The actual pop, right? Yes. The pop. Yeah. And they're underrated. Like, you know, they're the cheap candy kind of, you know, you get them in your bag and you're like, ah, so you eat all the good candy first. And then you get to the bottom and you go, I guess I'll have a Tootsie Roll. And then you realize how delicious they are. Oh, that. And then you're not like kidding. The, At the very end, the blue and the, the lime ones come along. <laughs> it's like, it's like gum, but not gum and it just i don't even know what it tastes like it's just like so good gum that doesn't ever uh last i like that yeah and an honorable mention to those fine people that do stick a pack of gum out for halloween always appreciated and undervalued to you uh gum givers and happy halloween good luck if you are trick-or-treating yes happy halloween to everybody hope everybody has a a great Halloween, but before we get into our guests here, it's time for the Manitoba Building Trades hot take. And that is, even after all the turmoil at quarterback with the Dallas Cowboys, I still think that the Dallas Cowboys are going to win their division. Uh, they're going to pull through here and uh, claim the NFC East, uh, however they uh, get it done. But I do believe that they're going to get it done. And we'll see if we can end the streak of 0 for 3 on the Manitoba Building Trades hot takes. And this one's going to take a while to play out, but. Uh, there you have it. A couple of guests on the show today. Uh, some familiar names, Connor Geeky and Matt Savoy, who are currently suited up. Uh, Connor for the Verdant Oil Capitals and Matt for the Sherwood Park Crusaders. Both, uh, both playing some games here as uh, those schedules have got underway. And without further ado, joined by Matt Savoy and Connor Geeky, the former first and second overall pick in the Western Hockey League Bantam draft. And by the looks of it, it looks like... Uh, Sav still going with his quarantine haircut. Yeah. <laughs> a little wavy. How's it going though, guys? It's going good. Yeah, good. How are you? 
Yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, obviously, you guys have been playing some games. Matt, you're still in exhibition season with Sherwood Park, but Connor started the the season the MJ with the Oil Caps. How does it feel to be back on the ice playing some games? It's uh, it took a while. I think I'm still on the stage, still trying to figure it out too. It's been uh, a couple sloppy games here and there, but just uh, even playing is just it's good to be back. Oh yeah, it's definitely definitely a bit new. Um not playing game for however long we did. Uh, it's just getting back into rhythm and getting back into game like speed. So yeah, it's definitely been an adjustment, but I, I think we're in, on the right path. What was the, the layoff like for you guys? Obviously at the start, you could still stay in a little bit of a routine, but as it kept going, how did that work out? Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I was lucky to have baseball there. Uh, we won this year with seniors. So that was, uh, that was good and just kind of working out all summer and not really thinking about hockey too much. And then as it came around and I started to open up, uh, Strathclair, you can't really get much ice unless you drive three hours in quarantine. So that was, uh, that was good. Got to go to Winnipeg a couple of times, get my feet moving back on the ice. And here we are. Oh yeah, it was definitely a lot different. Um, just trying to stay busy and stay active. Um, was probably the biggest thing working out lots. Um, keeping up with your school work. Uh, we actually got ice pretty early here in Alberta, so it was good to stay on the ice. And, yeah, pretty much just uh, just trying to stay busy with, with everything going on. Now, is it different for you guys? Obviously, first season now, being able to wear visors, is that, uh, is that a little bit of a different, feel- different feeling for you guys? Yeah, I've, uh, I took one to the chin in practice, actually. It uh, wasn't pleasant, but I uh, learned my lesson now, so – so uh, it's not uh, – guys aren't afraid to chirp you anymore, too. So it gets pretty scary sometimes. Yeah, I took a puck to the face in practice as well. Uh, <laughs> pretty early. And so, yeah, definitely feel it. Um, I guess last week the Western Hockey League announced that January 8th is a start date. What are we looking forward to? <laughs> yeah, just coming down, seeing all the guys getting back into rhythm with, with Winnipeg. I think, I think it's, it's great that we finally have a, have a start date. Obviously you guys both played uh, some games last year for the ice. What can you take from those as you kind of go into your first full season? For me, it's just uh, obviously they're bigger, stronger guys. So I just got to keep my feet moving, you know, kind of adjust. Obviously the timing's going to be different than the MJ and, for sad the AJ too, so it's going to be different. But uh, I'm super excited, and I can't wait for it to happen. Yeah, I think last year was just part of more getting comfortable um, around the league and stuff. So it's definitely a lot faster, a lot bigger. So it's going to be an adjustment going from the AJ to the Dub this year. Um, yeah, but with the games last year that me and Geeks both had, I think that's that's going to help 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 uh, smooth in the adjustment. So, obviously, I mentioned at the top of the show here that you guys are the first and second overall pick in the WHL draft a year ago now. Um, if I could ask you who you model your game around and why, like what can ICE fans look forward to here in the future? Seth, you're going to have to go first, man. <laughs> um, I model my game after a guy like, uh, like Matt Barzell or Nathan McKinnon just – both fast skill guys that are good in the offensive zone and they're creative and yeah, um, I don't know. I just, that's, I guess that's what I look up to. For me, I've never really found one before, but like Pedersen or Sagan, something like that little kind of got good hands, but uh, needs to, I can kind of do my thing. Not the greatest skater in the world either, but can still make plays and, kind of use my head more than my feet sometimes. So getting back playing games is is big. Obviously, Connor and the MJ, the first league to really get going. Matt, you guys are doing exhibition games, as I mentioned. But I guess being back in the in the locker room and, you know, there's some changes being made. How are you guys adjusting to that and just happy to be back? Yeah, I think for me it's just, you know, you just – it could be worse. I mean – Obviously, I'm lucky to be playing uh, regular season games. Uh, obviously, Sav's playing exhibition, like you said, but 
regular season's totally different, I think. I mean, everyone's kind of trying a little harder, trying to crack spots. So uh, I'm pretty lucky to be playing right now in Verdon, and they're uh, treating me treating me unreal here. So I really wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Yeah, I think any opportunity you can get to play hockey in this in these times is you're thankful for it. So yeah, I'm really lucky to be playing. I believe you both got a chance to play in the rivalry against Brandon. But like you said, Connor, it's going to be a playing a lot of the same teams this year. Um, chance to build that up, I guess, with, with some teams that um, maybe you wouldn't have been able to do that before. But the consistency of games is going to be kind of like what the MJ is doing, right, uh, over and over against the same teams. You think that can help or is that going to hurt or is that going to be fun? I think it's going to be uh... – a mixture of all three. I mean, it's going to be a lot of bumps and bruises, especially against Brandon, because that gets heated even though we only play them however many times we did last year. But I think going three and three against them on a weekend, it's going to be a lot of bumps and bruises. But uh, I'm super excited. I think it's going to be fun to get back, like Sav said, meet all the guys and just kind of be with one team and just kind of know your role and try and move up. Yeah, I agree with, with playing teams so much. Like in the AJ here, we're playing Lloyd Minister our fifth and sixth time in a row uh, this weekend. So definitely gets a little heated in these matchups. But, yeah, it's 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 honestly fun. Get more physical games here. You got something more to play for. And, it's yeah, it's 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 really fun playing teams over and over again, I think. Listen, fellas, appreciate uh, you joining the show and uh, look forward to seeing you here in a couple months. Well, don't forget to follow us on social media at Icebreaker Show with two W's at, at Icebreaker Show with two W's on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, appreciate uh, you listening to the show, wherever that may be on Spotify, Apple Music, um, or YouTube, or wherever else you listen to podcasts. Uh, if you enjoy the show, tell your friends about it. Really appreciate that. And once again, wishing everybody a happy Halloween weekend. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you next week.